Carolina Fishing TV, showing you how to catch more fish. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Carolina Fishing TV. Captain Mike Taylor, myself, Captain Jeff Cronk. And we got a good friend on, Dion Lynn from high school. He also works with and, and uh, does some of the, the camera shooting for us. So uh, He's going to be fishing hard today, though. He's been begging for it, so this is his chance. <laughs> we're out here about 35 miles out of Beaufort Inlet today. Uh, we're going to do some bottom fishing. We're looking for triggers, maybe some snapper, hopefully grouper. Hopefully some grouper. That's it, baby. <laughs> right. we, got some, we got something for the grouper today. And we'll, of course, throw out some light lines, maybe catch some nice gaffers along throughout the day. Mike's got a group of rod down. We've got we've got some squid on some bottom rigs down. A bagal sand bass. I got something a little better than a sand bass here. The trigger, that's a trigger right there. Alright, first trigger of the day. Oh yeah. Not bad. About a two pound trigger fish. He locks that right there. That fin, he just locks that fin. I'm just pressing on it just as hard as I can. You can't move that fin. And right here is the trigger for that fin. It releases. You can just press that down. And he can't hold that fin up then. See it? See it? Nice trigger. Get him in here quick. Another trigger fish. Got him there on. he is. Put the grouper on there. Come on, baby. Bring him up, boy. Don't let him whoop you. <laughs> Got the grouper on the live chat. We're actually on the high side. And Probably 25 feet behind that ledge. You know they can group on the ledge. You know it. <laughs> no, I don't even got him. Good, he's hooked good. Our gags have got to be 24 inches. And he'll go what, 20, 25 and a quarter? 25 and a quarter. He's a good one. Here we go. Got one on already? Something, something playing with. I think he's on it. <clears throat> oh, missed it. He grabbed it and was going back to the ledge. These grouper are hitting the bait, swimming back to the ledge. It's hard to, it's not the normal bite. Uh-oh, he's going crazy, he's going crazy. Come on. There he is. Got him on. One of the groupers. Don't you like when a plan comes to I love it, boy. <laughs> Give me some of that. <laughs> Nice trigger back there. Nice trigger. He's pushing three pounds, that one. Look here, look here. Mm, got him on, big one. Oh, oh he come off that one. Him. Mike just had a grouper oh. on there. We off a good, solid grouper bite here. Nice. Yeah. Sweet boy, look at that. <laughs> We've got about two and a half, about three feet of 150 pound floral carbon. A six to eight ounce egg weight, depending on the current out here. A hundred pound braid, nice strong swivel. And then, uh, you know, we don't like a, a real heavy weight, just enough to get it down there. And there's a seven knot circle hook on his lip there. There he is. Oh. Send her forward. Pull that thing all the way back, hold that thing. Drop it. Just kind of flip her forward or get up on the bow with Mike. And you work your way back with the current. Mike's got a nice one on. Once you get him up, I've got him up about 10 feet now. Then you just play him. Good size, nice Mike. What you got? He's a decent one. Will he, will he beat 12 pounds? I don't know about that. That's an AJ. Oh man! Look at that. Hate. I hate that for you. <laughs> it's fun though. Let's swing them back this way. I was hoping they wasn't here today. Are you gonna set the hook? Go, 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 go man. Go. You gotta start chair anchoring. He's gonna go on the ledge. <laughs> go down, crank. Get him up quick. All right, go down, okay. crank. You got it. <laughs> It's easy if you put that under your, like on your hip. I can't get it out there. There we go. There you go. <laughs> you don't know how hard it is until you get a hold of one, you know? <laughs> when you get a hold of one, you realize how much he can pull. Oh, man. Well, if he would have pulled off the hook, we could have told you it was a grouper, right? <laughs> I believe this is a grouper. He grabbed it. You think so? Slide back here. Well, he didn't grab it and take line. He just grabbed it and just sat there. Kind of swimming slowly back to the ledge. Not a big one. Where's that hook set? He's hooked good. I got him. Nice one. Ten, 10 plus there. Nice grouper. All right, go for it, Dion. I'd say he's probably 11, 12 pounds. Yeah. Don't let him eat it now. Watch him. See the AJ there in the water? 
Grab that rod with both hands. <laughs> Trust me, if he grabs it, you're gonna want both hands on the reel. Let him grab it and throw him in the boat. Look at a couple of them down there. Now that's a big barracuda right there. Hang on to it. <laughs> Look at that barracuda chasing me. That barracuda's gonna go after my grouper. Look at that there. Oh, this is too much fun. Another throwback. <laughs> See his head there where he's all dinged up? That's where he had me in the ledge. Had to pull him out of the ledge. First time they'll grab your bait and go right straight for their hiding spot. Got one on? Yeah. I think it's AJ. It's coming up. Yeah, AJ. <laughs> About a 20 pounder. Got one. Get him up. Drag's no good on this one. <laughs> That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Better safe than sorry. Sweet. Nice one. <laughs> good job, boy. <laughs> there he is. Got him? Yeah. Get away from that ledge. There's a grouper there for sure. Not a big one, but he might keep. I got one. Double head and grouper. Come on, Dion. Feels like a really small one. You got one about 22. There's one there. Are you trying to click run? Oh, that's a decent one there, Mike. Yeah, he is. Ain't nothing wrong with that. There's your line. Nice fish. Beautiful fish. Can't wait to season you up and put you on the grill tonight. <laughs> Ghost. Ah, I pulled it away from him. Time. You got it that time. You got him. Let's see, get it set real quick. You got him. Crank, you can't just short pump him. Little short strokes. There you go. That's it. Not too bad. He's actually close right there. Oh, he measured him. had a good hit. He got on there. Come to the top of the water back behind the boat. Grouper. He's right there. Another one sitting on 21, 22, 23 inches. See him? No, no you, you don't. don't. Oh. Got me in the ledge, said, come on back later. Grouper. That's right. Fight against his face. That's 131 oh, floor carbon right there. Cut it like it was butter. Mike's got a big one. <laughs> nah, it ain't no big one. I need to keep it. Yep. Get him turned. That's the side they're going in on the ledge hard on Mike before. That's a decent fish right there. <laughs> That's not a grouper. <laughs> That's not a grouper. <laughs> Put it in that, put it in that hip. Here, sit down. Why are you breathing heavy for, Dan? <laughs> don't quit on us. That's the greater amberjack. This is the lesser amberjack. He's real dark, this one. And uh, he doesn't have that yellow stripe down him either. He's also shorter and thicker, too. I got one good shot up in the sky. Look pretty. There he is, right there. Nice one, about eight pounds. Keep reeling until your swivel comes to the rod tip. Oh yeah, nice group. Of them. Woo! 
Ooh, pretty one. Pretty one. You've been. Y'all called all that trash about me, man. I had to come through. Good job, good job. Good job. Hold him up for the camera. Dion gets to have some grouper for dinner tonight. <laughs> Mike's ragging on me up there. I was guessing about 12 pounds. What you got? Setting 14 pounds on the boat. 14 race. pounds. That I means got... yours you have about 16 pounds. It probably you're... is, then. I got a big one up there. Yours is a little bit bigger than this one. Look at that box. Plan for it, bro. Man, we've been here an hour. One more grouper and we've got our limit. Of... I'm on the bottom right there. There he is. All right. He's in the woods. Got him. Trigger. You got Trigger? Yeah. I got him out. He just dove real quick in the lid. They're small one, it feels like. Something's following him up. That's a grouper. Decent one. Not wrong with him. Oh yeah, nice grouper. Nice grouper. We go 10 pounds. We've been out here about an hour and a half now. That's our final, that's our limit there. So we got four people on board, two two uh, grouper per day per person. So we got eight in the box, and um, we got some trigger fish messing with our baits right here. So Mike just uh, put on a bottom rig and he's gonna check out that trigger fish bite. Another trigger? Yeah. That's what it feels like. AJ swimming around him. Nice trigger there. <laughs> they go four pounds almost, three and a half pounds. So that's a nice one there. We've got Mike just switched back over to uh, bottom fishing. We've had a lot of trigger fish eating our menhaden when we we're grouper fishing. And Mike's got a double, just a double standard double hook dropper rig there, bottom rig. Except for these aren't, uh, they're not store bought. Typically, a lot of folks when they make a double hook dropper rig, they use these three way swivels, heavy three way swivels. When you do that though, it still allows your leader material to wrap around your sinker and everything gets tangled up all the time. And notice how that's sitting out, that uh, leader where the hook's coming off from is sitting out perfectly perpendicular to that main line there. We're using uh, usually about 80 pound test. You can go down to 60 maybe in shore a little bit. We'll go 80 to 100 out here in the deeper water. You never know, Mike might have, we could have a big grouper hit these rigs too. So I'll take some uh, 80 pound fluorocarbon and um, typically up top on one end we'll put our swivel. I need probably about a foot, foot and a half. And I'm just gonna roll it into a big circle. And all I've did is I've got a circle in my hands with this leader material. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the two pieces here, I'm just gonna twist them one over the other, about six times. Three, four, five, six. And then I'm gonna take that loop, the other side, of that. I'm gonna go through that, that opening that I was twisting that together. Now, there's a lot of different ways to grab a hold of that. I, I grab it with my tongue, because you need really need three hands to do this. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it in my teeth, pull it through, and that's how it's gonna start, right there. Hold that loop for me. Normally, I just hold it with my teeth and pull. The only thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you wet these two ends right here, you'll burn that fluorocarbon. I'm gonna wet that. You pull on that real slowly, I'm gonna pull this together, and it just comes together nice and tight. You can let go of that now. And there it is, right there. Pinch that material together, run it through the uh, eye of the hook, right over the end of the shank of the hook there, the head of it, and back around. Now it's, when you first put them on, they've got a little play in them, they're a little bit loose. First fish or two you catch, it'll all tighten up, it'll all set in place, and it'll sit really nice. And right now it's sitting perfectly perpendicular, 90 degrees. So here's my, where my swivel's at, going to my main line, there's the first hook. I'm going to come down, you know, this is leader is probably about six inches long, so I want to make sure I go past that. I'm gonna come down in a few more inches, and I'll make another loop here. And when I'm done, those two hooks should never touch each other. Pinch the end again, put another hook on that one. And we're using right now today. We're using anywhere from a, a six aught to eight aught hook. Mike's got probably a six aught on. Might even have a five aught hook on. Those triggers have a really small mouth, so Mike shift, you know, switched over to a smaller hook. That's it, and I'm gonna come maybe, you know, eight or 10 inches above that hook, clip it, and that's where my weight's gonna go on. We end up with the double hook rig. There's my swivel end. There's my two droppers for my hooks. And then where Dion's got his hand here, my sinker's gonna go on there. They never tangle up, they're strong as can be. You don't have to spend all your money on the three-way swivels if you don't want to. 
and um, it's simple, it's easy. You can use some, uh, you know, if you got 80 to 100 pound monofilament on the boat, you can use that too. We usually use fluorocarbon because it resists that chafing on the bottom. Speaking of, Another. Mike's caught three or four triggers. He's got two triggers on right there at one time. Look at this. <laughs> the trigger down there, isn't it? Yeah. I don't have real big pieces you can notice because I have a smaller hook for these triggers. They got a small mouth. I'm going to throw it ahead of the boat a little bit for that current. We have about three knots of current here right now. My sinker end up right underneath my boat. There, it's on the bottom. They're hitting it right now. Missed it. There he is again. Missed it. There he is. Had to let him take it a little bit. Nice one. Now you want to talk about some good eating. These are good. I missed him. Look at it. Just as soon as it hits the bottom, they're on it. I can't imagine what it looks like down there, how many are there. It's crazy. I'd love to dive this place. Get the gear on here. Another trick. All right, folks. <laughs> We're back here at Dudley's Marina. As you can see on the bow, we had a pretty good day. We had two full boxes on board, so, and we got enough fish to clean right now. So we, we, we quit about 12 o'clock and took our 60 triggers, our limit of our grouper, and the bee liners didn't show up when that one leads were on. We were dealing with a lot of current today. There's probably four knots out there. Four or five knots at the end of the day. So, I've never seen that much current. It was like screaming. We were using six to eight ounce uh, lead weights, and it was barely keeping, you know, tending bottoms. So again, you know, we fished, what, 30 miles off today, Mike? Yeah, 30 miles off, and we ended up with <clears throat> one mahi there, and I don't know, probably about 10 AJs. Yeah. We had AJs all day long around the boat. We could have caught a bunch of AJs. We had a few, uh, surprisingly, we had a few small Spanish, about a pound to two and a half pounds come up around the, around the yeah. boat, grabbed our white lines and put a few of those in the box as well. Just a really good, uh, really good mixed bag trip. Um, bottom fishing, you know, this stuff, typically inshore, we're looking at more flounders and sea bass, a few triggers, and the further off you go, you get less of the flounder, and you can still pick up the sea bass, you get into the grouper, these triggers, it's just great out of here, at a Swansboro, at a, at a Beaufort Inlet, basically Onslow Bay. Dion, we appreciate you coming out today, buddy. Yeah, man. Me, man, I had a good time. I, was well, that your fish instead of uh, sitting behind the camera. Was that your first grouper today? <laughs> Uh, it wasn't my first grouper, but it was definitely my biggest. So. I got you. Well, good. Dion got, I think Dion got a grouper about 14 pounds up today, and he picked up two or three more as well. So just a really good day fishing. We appreciate everybody tuning in today. And uh, stay tuned for some more action on board with Carolina Fishing TV. Trigger fish have a, you know, they're kind of tough to clean. Everybody thinks it's really not that hard. you got to have the right equipment. Number one, straight at edge knife. You can take this regular knife and you can saw all day long. You're not, it's real hard to get him. But if you got a straight at edge knife, cut straight down the fish, then you switch to your fillet knife. Once you have that skin cut, it, it's easy. After you cut that line, you just cut right down the backbone. Just like you were cleaning a pan fish, a brim, or anything like that. I go ahead and cut it clean off, flip it over. Then you can de-skin it. They're, they're really easy. Cut out the rib cage. They just have a bad name, but it's just beautiful meat. Boneless. Real easy. So we're still going to go high on the head and low on the stomach. And still basically outline that fish. You can come inside with a knife. Mike likes to come inside. I go from the outside, but basically just run that back dorsal fin. Once you find those, just stay on top of it and just run that knife down that edge of it. And then the rib cage, it all depends. Like Mike mentioned about a serrated knife, you start getting the larger fish and they got a thick rib cage. So if you want to carve, if you don't have a serrated knife, you're better off carving out around that rib cage. If you have a serrated knife, I mean, you can just cut right through that rib cage, pop those bones, sit, slide it right down, and there's one nice slab right there. And now we're going to take him. Take the skin off from that. If your if your blade is not as wide as that that fillet, you might want to run it down the middle and separate this into two slabs of meat. But this blade's pretty uh, pretty long, so 
we're just going to lay that knife down, not quite flat, a little bit of angle to it, and basically pull against the skin and you're just sawing it off. There it is, there's the whole skin. Just cut that out. There, now we've got a boneless, skinless slab, probably about three pounds off that one side of that grouper. So. If you're going to grill them, you might scale them and leave the skin on, season them up and turn them face down on the grill. Um, if you're not sure what you're going to do with them, we'll usually take the skin off. We can still grill them like that. We might just go ahead and put some tempo on the grill first. 